Good evening, and welcome to tonight's Policy Pizza and a Pint. My name is Robert Ermel, and I'm the Director of Operations for the Manitoba Institute for Policy Research. And I want to thank you all for coming out on Jets game night to, to get ready for the game and to cheer them on. But before we get to that, I'd like to uh, welcome you this evening, and if you have more, uh, like more information about the Institute uh, and what we're about, I'd like you to take a look at the information on your tables. Um, or to check us out on the website at www.mipr.ca. Agriculture has always played an important role in Manitoba's economy. And while we will not be able to address everything that happens in the sector tonight, our panelists will help us understand what some of the macro issues impacting the Manito Manitoba agricultural scene are. How are innovations in the sector impacting rural communities? What are some of the environmental impacts we can expect to see in the future? And how uh, communities themselves are reacting to these things and how we can perhaps uh, mitigate their effects. Um, our panel this evening will answer these questions and many more. Our moderator this evening is Dr. Shan Sampert, Perspectives and Policy Editor at the Winnipeg Free Press. In our panel tonight, we have Dr. Ed Turnowitz, Tern I hope I got that right, Agricultural Economist at the University of Manitoba, Dr. Karen Wittenberg, Dean of the Faculty of Agriculture and Food Science at the University of Manitoba, and Mr. Andrew Dixon, General Manager of the Manitoba Pork Producers. Their detailed biographies are found in your welcome papers, so if you want to check them out, it's right there. Following tonight's event, I invite you to feed, fill out your feedback forms. Many of your event ideas come from your feedback. So thank you very much, and hope you enjoyed this evening. I'll pass the mic to Shannon to start us off. Thank you. Well, great. Thank you very much, and thanks everyone for coming. I promise we will get you out in time for the game. Um, and the fact is, is that agriculture really does have an effect on everything that we do because we eat stuff that is produced on farms and uh, for that reason and that reason alone it's extraordinarily important even though we are in an urban environment. So the, uh, the way we're going to do it is we're going to start with Anne, then Karen and then Andrew. I am the person with a hook, although I don't have a hook, it's a metaphorical one, but I am supposed to keep you to 8 to 12 minutes. And then after the uh, talk that you do, we're going to have a little discussion of the three of the four of us up here, and then we'll open up the floor for uh, people to ask questions as well. So without further ado, we'll start with uh, Ed and uh, his presentation. Go for it, Ed. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation to participate in this event. I want to commend uh, uh, MIPR and uh, uh, the Free Press for uh, doing this kind of a series and particularly for highlighting agriculture. Uh, I should make a uh, slight correction in terms of what, what I do. I may be an agricultural economist by training, but I have retired four times. So uh, uh, I uh, am at that stage in life where I'm probably much more dangerous than either of the two other panelists because they have as, as somebody to whom they are accountable. I am only accountable to my wife and that's on matters around the house. So uh, uh, she doesn't care what I say here. So uh, uh, just thought I should warn you on that. I, I like the concept of uh, uh, policy pizza and pints and Karen I was thinking maybe we might want to consider that in the faculty, in the classroom. I, I think that would go over well in the Faculty of Agriculture. And what I'm going to try and do is just give some general overviews about agriculture and uh, the question, what does society want from agriculture? And uh, in terms of starting this, uh, conjure up in your mind, what are the images of agriculture that you see in the media? And I see a number of media people here. Well, there's three. One is the, what I would call the storybook image, or the Willie Nelson, uh, old a straw hat and old dirty hanky kind of thing. Very much a storybook and certainly not the uh, prevailing approach to agriculture. A second image in the media is uh, farmer as a complainer, farmer as a whiner. Um, it's too hot, it's too cold, too wet, too dry, prices are too low, costs are too high, the government is shafting us, etc. Think about that. How often do you see that in the media? And then there's the third image, and that's the one that I really worry about, and that's the farmer or agriculture as the polluter, and concern about the environment. And uh, again, there's, uh, you know, these are the images in the media, uh, unfortunately, 
uh, the reality is a little bit different. And in terms of giving you an overview of agriculture in Manitoba, clearly uh, in 12 minutes can't uh, do much justice to it. But I want to make a couple of points. First is that agriculture is more than farming. It includes food processing, input supplies, and it is changing. And uh, there are many ways you can measure uh, how agriculture is changing. This particular chart uh, shows the relationship between number of farms and size of farms in Manitoba. Clearly, the number of farms has decli been declining uh, quite uh, rapidly. The size of farms has been increasing. And you can use many other metrics to show this, but I think this, this is a good illustration. In uh, 2011, at the last census, there were some 15,900 farms in Manitoba, some 22,000 farm operators, and uh, I think it's important. Thank you. And, uh, no, one more. And a uh, couple of interesting things. Almost a quarter of the farm operators are women. Uh, we tend to think of uh, agriculture as being male dominated. Well, perhaps it is. But there are, women are playing an increasing role in agriculture, not only in terms of supplying labor, but managing, and in the very, uh, various uh, parts of the agriculture value chain, including deans of agriculture which is nothing new because uh, I think you're about the fourth or fifth dean of agriculture in Canada that's, uh, that's a woman, so uh, it's, uh, it's happening. And the other point that I think is important to note about changing agriculture is that almost half of the farm operators do some off-farm work. Not necessarily full-time, but uh, various uh, varying amounts and for a variety of reasons. So it's. Uh, it's definitely not the storybook image of a uh, straw hat and old dirty hanky. Uh, and one of the, just wanted to make a little bit of an indication of food processing being a major contributor to Manitoba's economy. It represents some 28% of Manitoba's manufacturing output and meat processing accounts for over half of that manufacturing employment. And that chart gives you an indication of the economic importance of, of agriculture in Manitoba's GDP. The red line uh, is approximately 7.5 to 5.5% of Manitoba's GDP. The animal side and the, uh, uh, and the food side have been relatively constant, but the crop uh, uh, component uh, fluctuates for a variety of reasons. Another point. Uh, and perhaps a uh, takeaway point I'd like you to have is that one in ten jobs in Manitoba depend on uh, some aspect of agriculture. And keep in mind that farm operators are uh, probably less than 2% of, uh, of that uh, population. And uh, final point I wanted to make on agriculture in Manitoba is how important exports are for agriculture. In 2011, agri-food exports accounted for more than $4.3 billion. And uh, not only is it important in an absolute sense, but it's very much impacted by uh, market forces, uh, international or world market forces, and the policies of competitors. And I think when Andrew gets to speak, he'll probably have a word or two to say about how that impacts the uh, hog industry specifically. One, other, one, one point I'd like to uh, make uh, is, again, it's a, uh, the whole question of just how, how much um, does the farmer get from our food dollar? Well, this was a little bit of analysis done a few years ago, and uh, you, know, you often hear the question, oh, the price of wheat went up, you know, how much is our bread going to go up? Well, the reality is uh, wheat accounts for between four and five cents of that dollar spent on the bread. It's a little higher in uh, vegetables and meat and uh, dairy, but uh, 
there's less processing goes on in dairy. So uh, it's just to give you an idea that uh, uh, you can't really blame the farmer for uh, uh, for uh, for the food prices because uh, that's a that's a very complicated subject that uh, one could spend a lot more time on. Okay, what does society want from Manitoba's agri-food sector? And again, uh, let me be blunt. I think a significant and increasing proportion of our population has little knowledge of or interest in agriculture and rural issues. And uh, um, that's, that's part of the reality. We just don't know that much. And even those of us who came from the farm uh, are getting further and further away and I could not be trusted to drive a tractor anymore. In <laughs> fact, I couldn't be trusted 20 years ago when I took out a quarter of mile fence line with a darn big arrows. But, uh, uh, but the thing is, even in rural areas, the ag population, the farm operators and their families are a minority. So there's uh, a, lot of, a, a lot of people who just don't have that connection back to agriculture. And what do we want? Well, we want cheap and safe food. After all, we want it cheap. We're from Winnipeg. Uh, and we want it safe. And we really don't care where it comes from. Sure, we may uh, say, make nice noises about we want to eat Manitoba pork. But if we could get it cheaper from the US, we probably buy it from the US too. An interesting question is, but what does safe mean? And I think we, uh, as we know less and less about the food process, about food processing and the uh, production practices, we just simply tend to assume the worst. There's, uh, and again, maybe take a shot at the media, the uh, stories of uh, manure lagoons spilling make a much, uh, a much better headline than uh, stories about uh, some of the good things that are going on. And the other point that I think is fascinating about food safety is that by far the, uh, the most significant food safety issues are in the home. It's how we handle our food in the home, how we store it, how we prepare it. And then to throw a little more gasoline on the fire, well, what about GMOs? Well, I think that could be uh, a, a topic for a whole uh, two, two more sessions, but it's not as clear cut that uh, uh, GMOs are necessarily all bad for you or that they're totally safe. Um, what about imported foods? I think the argument can be made that uh, uh, our domestic producers are, are expected to toe the line a lot more tightly than some of the imported foods that we get, especially from Asia. And then if you really want to have fun, how about organic foods? Well, uh, yes, it's kind of nice to be able to go to the St. Norbert Market and buy your food. The reality is you're not going to feed your population that way, and you sure as heck aren't going to feed the world with organic food. Okay. Final point, we want, uh, we want to protect our environment. After all, we want to uh, use our land resources, our water resources, and we see the green algae in Lake Winnipeg. We tend to forget that it's a prairie, uh, prairie lake and a prairie slough. And, uh, but there's a tendency also to blame agriculture, that our practices are such that we're, get, we're uh, polluting the environment. Well, we could, that could be another topic uh, for another event. Anyways, let me conclude with uh, what I see as the real challenges for policy making. After all, this is a discussion on policy. Policy making, <coughs> excuse me, uh, you won't have to use the hook because my voice will give out first. Um, <laughs> policy making is influenced by and often controlled by groups who have uh, no direct involvement in agriculture. And I think that's part of the reality of uh, the political process. We have farm operators are 2% of the environment. Uh, take a look at the makeup of the Manitoba legislature that uh, there's there are really not that many people who uh, are the uh, policy influencers. And I think 
that there's an issue here for agriculture too. I think agriculture has to realize they're not going to call all the shots on policy either. And, um, and what that really means is that we need to improve the knowledge uh, two, in two ways. The, uh, the urban population or the non-farm population needs to have a better understanding of what goes on in agriculture, that you know, not being able to go into those pig barns doesn't mean there's something terrible going on. It means biosecurity. Um, just a lot of things that people don't understand. And I think agriculture has a challenge of how do we, uh, how do we tell the story in a way that people understand it and will believe it as well. Finally, agriculture is complex. It's changing. And I think we're going to have fun. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. That was great. Thank you.